Future Proof is sponsored by Equipping Young Adults for Life, Inspiring Student Resilience, Championing Hope. Hello and welcome to Future Proof. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood. Yes, I'm continuing to film during lockdown uh, this uh, business television series that is looking at the power of emotional intelligence and other uh, nuggets of gold, if you like, where it, uh, previously I've had people in the studio sharing some inspirational stories, perhaps signposting to tools, different ways of thinking, different ways of doing things. And this is never or has never been important, certainly in my lifetime, as it is now. Yes, it's lockdown. Yes, it's an uncertain future. Many students, many people in education are feeling quite quite apprehensive about their future. I don't have any magic wand answers, but what I hope to do is to just bring some inspirational thinking, maybe different ways of thinking. Maybe as you're listening and watching, you might get a completely different idea that has just come to you by something that you might have heard or seen. I have a new series of footage which I'm going to be putting out over the next few programmes, and this one starts off with me sharing my story. Before now, I've edited it out, but I've actually kept it in because there is a reference to redundancy. There's a reference to hitting rock bottom. And for me, the only way that I could see myself creating a better life for myself was to change the way that I thought. And uh, so I share the circumstances. Uh, please stay with the programme because there's an awful lot of content on emotional intelligence um, and on different ways of thinking. And I just share things that inspired me. And I just really, really hope that they inspire you to. So this is for students. This is to inspire you to feel confident about your future in this uncertain world. Personal development is something that we can either choose to do or it will come our way in a form of a crisis. You've all come here for many different reasons, I'm sure. Some of you know quite a bit about emotional intelligence already. Some of you are curious. You've heard about it, but other than that, you know nothing about it. And others of you know a bit about it, and maybe you've come to maybe confirm that some of what you think is emotional intelligence is correct. And of course, I hope a lot of you have come here for some learning. I didn't choose originally to learn more about emotional intelligence. It came my way through crisis. And so I stand before you now not as an expert in emotional intelligence, but I stand before you as somebody with a story. And we all have our stories. You have yours too. And through that story, I chose to do something different because what was happening at the time wasn't working for me. Back in 1991, my brother was diagnosed with malignant melanoma. In fact, before that, he was diagnosed with malignant melanoma and he died and his wife was pregnant at the time and it's one of those stories that was bad enough, if you like, on its own. But think back to 2004, maybe Christmas 2004. I don't know if you can remember what you were doing there. I was teaching in a school. I was a nursery teacher, but I had specialised as a music teacher as well. So it was carol service time. My father... Um, had been diagnosed with cancer and was very, very, very ill. But two years prior to that, my mother had been diagnosed with cancer and was in remission. So just before Christmas in 2004, 
my father died and I was doing the carol service for the school. I was a nursery teacher, so my contract was actually to teach the nursery children. They had asked me to take over the music department because I was good at music. My children had both gone to the Guildhall School of Music and they had major scholarships to private schools. So they knew that I could do and teach music. So the school were in crisis because in 2000, everybody wanted a millennium baby. So then moving on a few years, nurseries were emptying out. So they didn't offer me redundancy. They wanted to reduce my hours. They wanted to close the nursery and just get me to teach music. But the time frames that they offered me to do that was probably, in reality, half the time I was actually spending teaching music um, after school and during lunch hours. So, at that point, my story used to say that I was then made redundant between my father dying and his ashes going in the ground. But when I thought about it in reality of what really happened, I actually chose that redundancy because I chose not to take the hours of music that they were offering me because I knew damn well I could not deliver the same standard of music that I had been teaching when I was working there full time. So in my words, I say my world crashed. My husband and I had been having a bit of a difficult time, the emotional drainage of my mother's illness, my father's. So I got on an aeroplane and I went to Durban. And when I got off the aeroplane, my mother was actually out there grieving my father, but I also stayed with a friend. When I speak today, I'm going to be going through and sharing some of the books that I read that helped me on my journey through emotional intelligence. But before I continue, I would like to invite Amanda, please. Could you stand up, Amanda, and could you read out the definition of emotional intelligence written by Maya and Solovey? Right. I'm going to leave that there for a moment. How many of you have seen that definition before? How many of you would say that this concept of emotional intelligence is quite new to you? Thank you. Thank you for your... That helps, too, to position it. OK. Well, I will be unpacking what that means. But before I do, I'd like you to turn to the person next to you, and please don't leave anybody on their own. So if, you, if it's threes, then fine. Could you please tell each other why you're here today? What is it that you would like to walk away with today? Off you go. Thank you. If I have stopped you too soon, then please, please continue that discussion later um, in the break or in the pub. Because when we get to the bottom of why we are here and why we're doing things, then that in itself will really, really increase and hone down on the learning that we're looking for. So, I'm going to tell you six points of learning that I had, and then I will give you a title on that, and then I'll talk through some, um, if you like, different understanding of what um, gave some sort of body, if you like, to that understanding. That will make um, more sense in a moment. There are different definitions in some way, or they vary around what emotional intelligence is. So I have put up these, and you might find some different words in your research from other people. But in essence, it is about self-awareness. It's about empathy. And... Don't misunderstand empathy. Empathy can be empathic in a sympathetic way, an understanding way, but also there are people who do not wish you well at all who will create a sense and a relationship of empathy with you to lure you into something or to get what they want. So sometimes there's too much of a positive slant put on the word empathy. Relationship management, self-regulation and internal motivation. So my first lesson for me was, when I got off the plane, my friend gave me this book. 
I highly, highly recommend it to anybody who is in crisis. I can't pronounce the author, but it is called In the Meantime, Finding Yourself and the Love that You Want. At the time that I arrived in Durban, my self-esteem was in my boots and my confidence was not far off either. And so for me, I had to read that quite slowly. I couldn't read too much in one go. It's quite emotionally challenging, but it's incredibly healing. The concept there is that there are three levels of thinking and behaving, and then there is the attic. So she gives you a picture of a house. And her explanation of basement level of thinking, first floor, second floor, third floor, and attic, is so real, you catch yourself out all the time going, oh, that's just what I've been doing, that's just what I've been doing. And that was the beginning of me looking at emotional intelligence. 